So this is what we are going to focus on today and I've called this the report setup and initial layout. Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. In this video, we're going to start off my series on how to create great dashboards in Power BI. Now, even though I use Power BI, if you use Tableau or Click, that doesn't matter. You can still use these concepts for any other visualization tool. Now, in this video, we're going to focus on the report setup and the initial layout. This is probably one of the most important concepts that I have learned over time and that is how important it is to set up your reports the right way from the beginning to ensure consistency and ensure that your reports overall has a certain level of quality because what I'm going to try and show you guys in this series is not, it's not how to create the best reports the most beautiful reports the most mag magnificent reports but I want to teach you guys how to create reports that are consistently well developed that has a nice layout and it is it's easy for the end users to use this and they will come back and they will use them again and again because the most important metric it's not how many how many cool things can you include in your reports it's not how many gadgets or features or whatever you learn that you really want to show off it is whether or not the users are using them and they are adapting them and it is becoming a part of the business so let's focus on that in this series so this is what we are going to focus on today and i've called this the report setup and initial layout i will share the power bi file on my github but the reason I want to focus on this is because this sets more or less the, the, the framework for how you're going to align elements and how the users are going to be able to navigate to different dashboards and different um, different pages that you create in your report. And it's very important to be consistent and always, always, always keep in mind when you are creating something for someone else, then it is really about their user experience. And that's what we are trying to optimize. We're trying to make it so that these reports are consistent and easy to navigate and that is why I spent so much time on this I think this is really really important so let's just take a look at what we have now and then I will recreate it so on top we have the title um, we have the year and month and I like to make the the time navigation I like to keep that open because I think it's you know it's nice to have it on top it's it's easy to just click around and and I think it's better than having those drop downs where you have to kind of go down and select the year and month for that on the left side, I have different slicers, which is what we call it in Power BI. You can see that I have turned on the search for all slicers so that you can search. Everything is spaced evenly and I've used a gray background to create some lines, to create some separators between different elements. And that is what we're going to create today. And when, as we move in the series, we're going to add more and more. And then you will see how I will use this, uh, this, this frame which I've set up to create consistency and also align elements. And when everything comes together, it's gonna look really nice with the different separators and things are just gonna come together really good. So let's start off and as we go, I'm gonna teach you guys some small tips and tricks here to make this look uh, look really nice um, all together. So let's just start off. So the first thing I do is I add a title on top. Nothing special, so let's just call that dashboard. And I will give that a title. And you can see right away, you can see that right now it's hard to separate the title from the background. So the second thing I like to do is I click the background and then I go over here. We have page information, page background. I will choose a gray color and give it 50% transparency. And then I need to make this background white. So right away, it's now easy to separate. You know, you have a title. It's easy to separate that from the actual background. And the next thing I like to do is I like to add the navigation on top. And notice that a lot of times in date tables, you have years that goes across the entire date table. So if the date table goes from 2020 to 2025, just to make sure that you, you are covering the entire scope of years that are available, then you will usually have a lot of years. But I only keep, I usually keep the current year and two years before that to make sure that the user doesn't have to uh, scroll or, or select between a lot of different, um, a lot of different um, years because they're not relevant. You know, 2021 is the year we are in now. 2020, if you want to go one year back. 2019, if you want to go two years back. And I also like to use the short name of the months. And as you can see, I've sorted those. This is what it looks like after I made the changes. Let's see what it looks like from the get go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just drag down the width a little bit so that I have a little bit of extra space and then I need to find a slicer. There we go. And then I will search for year. Let's find a uh, calendar year. And here you can see what it looks like. So you can see that I actually have 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20 and 21 in this. 
Um, and we are going to, let me see if I remember all this. It is going to be a horizontal oriented. So now you'll see, if I drag this up now, and I try to make this the same space as the previous one, let's just put it here. You will see that I will have to click back and forth here. I don't want that. And if I make the width any smaller, you have to click back and forth. I don't want that. I think that's a bad user experience. Don't want that. So let's start off by just naming this year. That's a better name than calendar year. And the way I'm gonna make sure that it always selects the right years is I'm gonna use something called, usually you have like a, uh, like some sort of, you, have, you can have an index field, like an index field, how many uh, numbers before or after the current year are the different years, and then you can filter on that. Let me show you guys what it looks like. Let me copy this one. And then let's make it into a table just to exemplify it. So you can see 2021 is our current year. Then we have a couple years before that. Sometimes the day table also go beyond this year, but we don't have that problem now. If I add relative year position to that, and we turn off the sums, you will see that 2020 is zero, 2020 is one, 19 is two, and 2018 is three. So that means when we come to 2022, then that's gonna be zero, 2021 is going to be 1, 2020 is going to be 2. So what I have to do is I have to filter this filter here on top so that it shows only the years that is current year and the two years before that. Because what happens is when I get to 2022, this will move and I'll always have current year and the two years before that. And it is a much better navigation experience for the end user. So let's add that as a filter. And then I will do, it'll be, it's less than or equal to zero and it's greater than or equal to actually it's less than or equal to two and it's greater than or equal to zero is what i believe it'll be yes so now you can see i have the year and i only have the three years that i want now notice what i can do now is i can copy this one because i did some changes to the formatting i think i changed we can change the text size and we can change the slicer header title and you can see now I have I have the size that I want. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to copy this one and paste it. Then I'm just going to drag it in, put it here, and I'm going to drag it all the way out. And I'm going to use this one for my month. And the reason I copy and pasted it is because now I copy pasted the formatting, which means when I have consistent formatting, I get a consistent look. So we're going to search for month. And then we need to find, let's say, calendar month same thing now you can see actually because I created the other example before this this one is sorted the right way usually it is not sorted January through December usually you have to go in and and proactively do that and the way you do it in Power BI is you go to let me see if I can remember this now is it modeling Actually, I need to click it. There we are. Yes. Sort by column, and then I choose calendar month number. If I put it back to what it was by default, if, you, if it, it, by default, it chooses whatever is the default for the column. Now look at it. You can see it goes alphabetically. Now, once again, I'm always thinking about the end user in their experience. If I was working on this, I have the years 2019, 2020, 2021, and now, oh, I want June uh, and February. And then you know it's not sorted in the way your mind thinks you would have january february march you would want to have it sequentially like the year goes you know like like the months go then i would go to calendar month now we sort by you can do month number then you will see that we get we get this sorted january february march april may etc so it's sorted the right way let me make this title let's see we can drag this up there because now I know approximately how much place I need. I'm going to drag those up there. So that looks that looks fine. And then I'm going to make this bigger because I have room to do that. 24. Okay, so we've started to create um, the, the frame for what our reports are going to look like. We have the navigation on top. Looks good. We have a title. That looks nice. If you guys are still watching and you like this video, then consider subscribing and help me hit my goal of 10,000 subscribers in 2021. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding some slicers. 
And a slicer is basically a filter. You also have this in Tableau, you have them in Click, um, same thing. Now, so I'm gonna try and find a good, good width for this. Now, I think these are a little bit too wide, but let's just start off and we can adjust as we go. So on the other one, I had customer city, subcategory, category, and product name. So we can search city, we'll add that. Oh, that didn't turn out right. Let me click this one, let me activate it. Now, before I start to add the other ones, I'm gonna format this one and finish formatting that one because then I can just apply that formatting to the other filters, the other slicers, and I don't have to do stuff over and over and over again. So notice this. Um, so I'm gonna make it a drop down, And the reason I do that in Power BI, this is a tip for the people who use Power BI, is that when you make it a drop down, when you go onto this page, it doesn't do a, it doesn't query the data model to get the list before you open the list. So what happens is when you open the dashboard, there's a lot, a lot less queries going to the data model to get the information out. So I'm gonna turn the background on. I wanna format this all the way through so that it is done and it's ready. So I want the white background so that it gets a nice box around. You have customer city. I want I want the list items to be smaller. I like that. Because usually you have this on a, a screen and it, it automatically adapts. It makes it much bigger on a larger screen. So you don't it looks small on my screen because I'm on a laptop now, but on a larger screen it's more than good enough. Then we are not gonna turn title on slicer slicer header. We'll do that. I will turn on. I will turn on the search. So when I click it, you can see you can search now for different values. So that's fine. fine. That's fine. So there's two things I can do now. Either I can just copy paste the slicer. So we'll do that one time, and the other time I will use the formatting tool. So I'm gonna click it, copy paste it. Now notice the way I get consistent spacing between elements is I line it up. I hold my left shift and I press one down. I get the exact same space between each filter. Line it up, shift, down. Now let's see, I add customer city, let's go subcategory. Subcategory, let's drag that out. Why do I keep doing this? I have to activate it. Subcategory, we got that. Um, then category and product name. Now let me do copy paste, line it up. We'll go one down, category, product category. Okay, I'll keep that name. And just to show you guys the formatting tool, um, if I add a slicer, you'll see it becomes totally blank. I will, actually I'll make it the same. I'll make it the same size, give me one second. Now it's the same size, I'll line it up. I will go down and then I want product name. That I keep doing that. Come on. There we are. Now you can see it has a different formatting. I will click this one, format painter, apply it, and it will add a lot of the formatting in terms of text size. It will not change the types, so you still have to change it to a drop down, but we're pretty close and you have to turn on the search. So you add some of the formatting, not all of them. Now let's make some final adjustments to make the end user experience even better. And right now we have the overall look. Now, something that I also like to think about is each element in Power BI, um, when you click them, you get some options here. And I know that you also can get these types of options in other softwares, Tableau and Click. I like to disable these because there's really no point in having those options for the end users. So I'll turn off the visual header on all of these for two reasons. One, there's really no point being able to maximize or export these lists. Second is if you use this on mobile, then those things are just, it's just an annoyance that they pop up because when you navigate, it's just not a good end user experience. And notice everything that I think about here is how can I create something that looks nice, it's easy to, easy to look at, easy to use, and I, I'm always thinking about maximizing the end user experience. The last thing that I would do is that um, if I were to use this um, this layout now again, I would actually duplicate down here. Then the last thing I'll do is here. You can go to sync 
slice, slicers. And if you click one, I want to make sure that they are always synced. And the reason for that is when you make a selection on one page, I want that selection to follow the other page. Now that is default uh, for click. It is not default for Tableau. There you have to um, enable it the same way that that one element, I believe, filters the other elements. Once again, end user experience. When I am at this first page, I click 2020, I have clicked January. I would love for that selection to come with me to the next page so I don't have to make the selections over and over and over again. I will remove the blank and then I will publish this. And if you guys wanna take a look at this, if you guys wanna copy this, feel free. It's up to you guys. In future videos, we will add more to these reports, but right now I really want to focus on that initial setup and that layout, which is going to be the foundation for the reports that we will be creating in this series. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow the series, if you want to see more videos on data and analytics, then subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Whew.